Neural net, take one. First live test. Here we go. <laughs> Version 3, take 1. Version 4.2 uh, with the larger outsize. So, how did this come to be? You just explained it in five minutes. Why did it take a year? So the original idea was a lot more straightforward. Um, he was the original drawing for it, actually. Um, it was just to take a guitar and run it through a clean channel and an analog effect, and then be able to train a network to turn A into B uh, on the fly. So first I got started on some proof of concept experiments. Hello, test one, two, three, test one. And then I dropped off of that idea for a few months um, until I realized it'd be a lot more fun to turn a guitar into another instrument. And so I began some experiments with just a really simple MIDI guitar and MIDI piano sounds. And then I gave up on it for months and months, which isn't a bad thing. You know, not everything is going to pan out and that's normal. In this case though, I was definitely just afraid to try it on a real guitar. I really wasn't sure that it would actually work, and so I didn't want to try it. Mainly because it was so much easier to just have a pre-baked recording uh, on your phone and show it to people and be like, and then next, I'll do it on a real guitar and it'll be great and then not actually ever deliver on that promise. <laughs> but finally, I had played the hype card too many times to people, and so I had to try to put my money where my mouth is. By the way, friendly peer pressure can sometimes be a good thing. So, I finally gave it a shot. Neural net, take one. First live test, here we go. changing parameters, the shape of the network, re-recording the training data, adjusting how the data was shaped and cleaned up. But the reason there aren't more of these, like, uh, recordings of the old stuff is because I stopped filming them because it was just... It was, it was just so much. And most of it was bad. Also, y'all, it takes forever to train these things, and it sucks, and you can spend the whole weekend waiting for the results, and you come back and you realize that you trained your network to turn a piano into a guitar instead of the other way around, which, admittedly, is a very funny problem to have. But, finally, we got here, which is, uh, it's interesting, I hope. But, boy, there are a lot of trials and tribulations along the way. First of all, I want to say, <laughs> neural networks aren't magic. You can't just point a network at a bunch of data and then press train and then wait a week and then have it work perfectly. I remember showing someone a recording really early on that was really janky and being like, yeah, it's really janky. Um, and their response was, yeah, but you know, it just needs to train more, uh, which is not how it works. If I go outside and jump a hundred times every day, that isn't going to instantly make me a world-class high jumper. It's just as important how you design and work on the training than the actual act of training itself. So, for anyone about to attempt to embark on something like this themselves, here are my tips. Number one, understand your data and your problem. That's not 
I'm not gonna do it like that. Number one is understand your data and your problem. So at this point, libraries like Keras have a lot of the actual network writing code down pat. So a lot of the code that I wrote and that you'll probably end up be writing is actually on reading, slicing, pre preparing the data. And while, of course, network design plays a huge part of this, you're not going to have good results without good data. And the only way that you'll know how to get good data is to understand your problem good. Good. So understanding your problem space is a really important part of working on a project like this. Uh, one of the things that we do actually, there's a line in the code that lines up the peaks of the waveforms as best as it can, because otherwise the input and output would just be too random. As well, if you can, try visualizing the data. Even though it's going to take a bit to set up, it's going to almost always be worth it. So that means visualizing the progress of the training, uh, as well as also just visualizing the data period. Early on, the network was not doing very good, and so on a whim, I visualized the waveform uh, and realized that somewhere in all of that array manipulation, I was turning the values, all the negative values positive, which is really hard to see in the code, but when you visualize it, you're like, oh, it looks like that, and that's wrong. <laughs> Number two is be methodical in your training, and this sucks because training takes forever, and so you want to just jump in and do a bunch of ideas that you think will work, but it will not work out in the long run. You really need to measure and try one thing at a time to know that it's actually working. This also means properly labeling and saving files um, in a way that's both informative but also not obtuse or just cumbersome. So for instance, this is a real file I named, a real file convention I was using for a while, um, and it's not, it's not legible. Number three is the map is not the territory. Uh, you can't, it's so easy to want to just uh, hit train, leave, see the little number go up, and then make some changes, and then hit train again. But you really, if, if, if your network is something like this, something that is, has a real like qualitative attribute to it, you really need to test it. Which is why I actually stopped doing those sort of, uh, you know, experiment diary videos that you saw at the beginning, uh, because it was such a drag to set up the camera and the tripod and wear a nice shirt and try something for the first time that usually was only like a very slight improvement or was bad. And so I would try it less often, but you, you gotta try it. You have to, to bring it into the real world or whatever you're trying to do with it. You can't just hit, hit train and be like, that was, a, that was a good day of work. I did a good job. So yeah, that's it. That's a video. Look at me, making videos. Um, yeah. This is what I'm working on next. Stay tuned, maybe, who knows.